Out of the depth have I cried unto thee, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice, and let thine ear be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If thou, Lord, shouldst mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? But there is forgiveness for thee, that thou mayest be feared. I wait for the Lord. My soul doth wait, and in his word do I hope. My soul waiteth for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. I say, more than they that watch for the morning. Let Israel hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy, and with him is plenteous redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all his iniquities. God is good. And all the time. Psalm 100 verse 4, verse 5, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. As long as there has been God, there has been truth. As long as there is God, there is truth. As long as there will be God, there will be truth. But as I said last night, and we all agreed, one day error and false teachings will come to a fiery end. Along with those who persist in living their lives by error. I welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. And I welcome those online. Similarly, I believe God will bless us through his all-powerful word. This created the universe. I'm sure you know that. This raised Lazarus. Matthew 8, 16, he cast out the spirits with his word. It is only this that intimidates Satan. Not how often you sit on a pew. That does not intimidate him at all. Studying and obeying this is what causes him to sweat. I thank God for truth. What do you say? When Jesus prayed, he said, sanctify them. How? Through thy truth. Come on. Thy word is truth. Not my word or President Biden's word. But God's word is truth. And truth alone can sanctify. How was your day? Was it good? Did any one of you have a particularly difficult day? May I see your hand? A particularly difficult day? No? All right. We thank God for that. Maybe it's coming tomorrow. But whether it comes or not, we serve a God who is able to handle anything that comes our way. One of the most comforting things about being a child of God, he does not allow anything you and he cannot handle. What did I say? The two of you. God and you. He allows nothing that you and he cannot handle. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will, with the temptation, also make a way of escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Whatever trial comes your way as a child of God, I am not talking to children of Satan. I am talking to children of God. Whatever trial comes your way, you can handle it. That's what the Bible says. If you refuse to believe that, you import anxiety into your life. Who's with us tonight? You are not a Seventh-day Adventist. May I see your hand? You are, ah, we have some good-looking guests. All right, what's your name, my dear sister? Madge Cummins. How are you? Nice to see you. Thank you very much for coming. Would you tell us who invited you? Okay, invited you. <laughs> What's her name? <laughs> What's your friend's name? Who invited you? Who? Aza. Spell it. H A. Oh, Hazel. Oh, Sister Hazel, forgive me, I have sinned. Hazel, thank you for begin, bringing our lovely friend. God bless you, Sister Cummings. God bless you. Say amen for Sister Cummings. I saw some people back there behind Sister Cummings. Yes, what's your name, my good brother? Richard. And the name is? Clover. Richard and Clover. Where are you from? And Richard, where are you from? San Antonio. The land of the Alamo. Okay. All right, Richard. Sister Clover, good to have you. Say amen for Richard and Clover. Amen. That was weak. Say it again. Amen. Or anybody else. You are not a... Oh, 
Yes, my brother, what's your name? Your name is Israel Miller. How are you, Brother Miller? Where are you from? You look like the Prime Minister of Jamaica. You look nicely dressed. <laughs> God bless you, Brother Miller. It's good to have you. Say amen for Brother Miller. Amen. Say it again. Amen. One more time. Amen. God is good. All and all the time. And, ah, yes, Sister Clover. Yes, who invited you? Tell me. Yes? Andre is a good name. Where is he? Oh, there he is at the back. Uh, <laughs> okay. Andre, you're a nice man. God bless you. The church needs more nice men. Okay. Ah, yes, my brother. What's your name? Errol Henry. How are you, Errol? Where are you from? Jamaica is a good place. I spent a year in Jamaica back then. I bought 12 oranges for 50 cents. So you know that's during the time of the Great Depression. That's a long time. No, seriously, I was in college. I bought 12 oranges for 50 cents. No, not now, not now. <laughs> not now. Brother Henry, God bless you. Who invited you? Oh, where is Sister Wife? Where is she? Ah, uh, Why are you so far? All right, but don't tell me it's okay. All right, Brother Henry, keep coming. Keep coming. We love your wife, and we want you to be with us. Anybody else? You're not a Seventh-day Adventist, but you're with us. Anybody else? All right. I am sure we have online those who are not Seventh-day Adventists. We are delighted to have you. I speak with concentrated sincerity. I may the Lord bless in a very special way. Let me pray now for all our guests. Dear God, we have visitors among us. We are delighted and honored to have them. You love them. You desire to save them. Right where they sit, Father, grant them a blessing, I pray, please. Right where they sit. Don't wait until they get home, God. Bless them right where they are, I pray. You choose the blessing, Father. In Jesus' name, let God's people say, Amen and Amen. Our subject for this evening, government by the people. What did I say? What was our subject last night? What was our subject yesterday morning? <laughs> what was our subject yesterday morning? Get out of the way. Yes, yes. You pray for that man. Okay. <laughs> Did I tell you I'm happy to be with you? Well, I am. I'll tell you, there are two reasons why I'm delighted to be with you. One is an honor. Speaking for God is a tremendous honor. If I were to be asked to speak to the president for President Biden, I'd be highly honored. Let me tell you a secret. I, was a, I just came from Nigeria on Wednesday, and I left home on Friday to be here. I came from one crusade to the next. I stayed in a palace in Nigeria. If my Nigerian friends are listening, God bless you, God bless you. In a palace with a traditional king. He's a Seventh-day Adventist. Very nice man. Very gracious. Very intelligent. Very humble. I was treated like royalty even though I am not. Are you following with me? And so I was very honored to be in that palace for two weeks. Driven back and forth with escorts, guards, I was greatly honored and delighted. I miss them very much. I really do. I sent a text to one of them saying, I miss the entire experience. And may God bless them. But I want to say, speaking for God is a high, high honor. Can you say amen? amen? The second honor is speaking to those who love God. Can you say amen? amen? Who am I talking about? You. Do you love God? Can I see your hand? Ah, look at those hands. A forest of hands. God bless you. On the count of three, let's say, Father, we love you. Are you ready? One, two, three. Father, we love you. One more time. Father, we love you. One more time. Father, we love you. Now, make it personal. On the count of three. Father, ah, yes. Come on, one more time. Father, I love you. One more time. Father, I love you. The Bible must be made personal first. Let's read or recite John 3.16. For God so loved... No, 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 no. We want the sunrise revised version. For God so loved me, uh-huh, that he gave his only begotten son, that if I believe, I will not perish, but I will have eternal life. P 
personalize the Bible. If that's clear, say amen. amen. Mm -hmm. It was written for you. Believe me, it was written for you. Use it. What's our subject for tonight? Government by the people. Uh, what is this? You don't know. That's not true. What's this I'm holding in my hand? I'm checking to see if mine is off. It is. If you're not using one of these gadgets, turn them off completely. Don't put it on vibrate, turn it off. If you put it on vibrate, when it vibrates, you look to see who's calling. And the person next to you will look to see what you're looking at. And so that's the way we are by curiosity. And so turn it off completely as a mark of respect for God. Can you say amen? amen. Does God deserve respect, yes or no? Ah, yes, God is a nice person. I really like God. Favor number two, while I'm speaking, pray for me and say, Lord, Put your words in that man's mouth. I've said it many times in my sermons. I have listened to television preachers and asked God, Father, please, shut that man up. Don't kill him. Shut him up. Shut that woman up because of what they're saying. And so I want you to tell God, Lord, put your words in that man's mouth. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 9 then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth and the Lord said unto me behold I have put my words in thy mouth and God knows as I stand I want to speak thus saith the Lord and favor number three what is that think Isaiah 1 18 come now let us reason together saith the Lord let's reason why do we do what we do? God says, come to me. I'll come down and I'll talk to you. He came to Adam. Adam, let's talk. Where are you? What's going on? He came to Cain, the first murderer. Where is Abel? God is willing to listen to you. Why did you get a bad evaluation on the job, says God? Let's discuss your performance. Talk to me. Why is it no one in the church likes you? Talk to me, says God. Let's examine this abnormality. He's reasonable. Satan is unreasonable. God is reasonable. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for life. In a world where people die every day by the thousands, Thank you for knowledge of Christ. Thank you, Father, for his blood that still flows. Wash me now in that blood, God, and remove anything from me that you do not like. I come to you, Father, because I need help to speak divine things, and I'm human. I ask you in the name of Jesus Christ, as verily as people in the Bible were possessed by demons, I want to be possessed by the Holy Spirit. Let him take charge of my mouth, my eyes, my ears, my hands, my feet. Everything that's me, Father, make it yours as an instrument for the proclamation of truth. Bless all those listening, dear God, online and in this building. Father, remember our guests. Bless them in a very special way. And wherever little boys and little girls are listening, ah, God, give them your sweetest blessing, I pray. Bless this country of the United States. Guide the deliberations of the leaders and remind them that righteousness exalteth a nation. Do this for every other nation represented by those listening. Father, hold on to me now, God, and use me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Go with me to Romans chapter 5. We'll read verse 12, our subject, government by the people. Romans 5, reading verse 12. We read from the King James Version of the Bible. It is now about 8 o'clock. I'll release you by 8.40. I'll try to do it sooner, but I'll see what the Spirit tells me. What book did I say? What chapter? What verse? If you have my version, read with me. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, stop. Now finish the verse. And death by sin. No, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. God bless you for your eagerness. And death by sin keep those two words in your mind sin and death let's go to romans 5 let's read 20 and 21 moreover the law entered that the offense might abide might abound 
But where sin abounded, grace doth much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death. So we have sin and death. Let's go to Romans 6. Romans 6. We read verse 16. Our subject, government by the people. Romans 6, verse 16. What does the Bible say? Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey. Carefully now, microscopically, whether of sin unto death. Stop. Well, finish it. Or of obedience unto now. Here again we have sin and death. They go together. Well, Romans 6. You know it very well. Verse 23. Say it for me. For the wages of sin, so we have sin and we have death. Go to James 1. James was a half-brother of Jesus. Jesus had another half-brother who uh, wrote a book of the Bible. Who was he? Jude. Very good. Whoever said that? Jude. Do you have James chapter 1? Not yet. I can't give you all night to find James. Do you have it now? All right. Let's read from 13 to 15. Let no man say, when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. Sin when it is finished. Ah, here again we have sin and death. Go to Ezekiel 18. Ezekiel 18. Let's read verse 20, the very first line of verse 20. What's our subject? Government by the people. You have Ezekiel 18, verse 20. You know it very well. You can say it without looking. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. What do we have again? Sin and death. So we've had Romans 5, verse 12. Romans 5, verse 21. Romans 6, verse 16. Romans 6, verse 23. James 1, verse 15. And we have Ezekiel 18, verse 20. About six verses that tell us sin, death, sin, death. Let's go to the original proclamation of that fact. Genesis 2, 16 and 17. Genesis was written by whom? Moses, yes. And Jesus accepted Moses as the author of the first five books. I don't argue with Jesus. Jesus believed the flood occurred. Jesus believed that Cain lived. Many Bible scholars do not accept the first 11 chapters of Genesis as actual history. But Jesus accepted them as history. Are you with me? And so a PhD in theology is not always, well, let me drop that, leave that alone. All right. Genesis 2, 16, 17. When you found it, say amen. Let me pray again. Father, continue to be with me and remind me I'm in this desk for your glory, not mine. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, What? Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. So we have disobedience or sin, and we have death. Now, Sin, death. And that was announced before sin occurred in the garden. God said, if you disobey me, which is sin, you will die. Now, God does not ambush people. Did I say that clearly? He does not ambush you. He does not jump out from behind a bush and say, gotcha. He gives you information ahead of time. Satan ambushes people. God does not. Listen to me again. God gives people information on which they should make the right choice. Now, go to Genesis 3. We'll read from verse 1. Our subject, government by the people. And you'll soon realize why I chose that subject. Do you have Genesis 3? Verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, He shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, He shall not eat of it, neither shall he touch it, lest he die. Verse 4. 
And the, the serpent said unto the woman, what? Ye shall not surely die. Pause. God told them, if you eat, you die. God warned them, why? He did not want them to die. You didn't all get that. Let me try it again. God could have kept the information secret and allow them to eat. He does not want them to die. Let me say it again. God does not like death. Are you with me? Ezekiel 33 verse 11. Just listen. Say unto them, as I live, saith the Lord, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. If God has no pleasure in death, in what does he have pleasure? Life. Come on, say amen. He has pleasure in life. He wants to give you life. But because our minds are so restricted, we only see life as 70 years, 3 score and 10. We forget the life God wants to give is a life that will never cease. And it's coming. Now, if God loves to give life, he warned them. Satan, who used to be Lucifer, of whom the Bible says, thou, art, thou, hast be, thou was perfect in all thy ways. Thou sealest up the sun, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. In other words, the highest being God ever made was this being called Lucifer, who is now called Satan. He was so close to Christ, you could hardly detect the difference. He was wise. Than, he was wiser than any other created being, including Gabriel, who is now the highest angel in heaven. He knew sin led to death. He wanted them to die. And so he said, you will not die if you eat. The devil has not changed. If he has changed, he's only changed in that he's, begotten, he's gotten worse now. Satan has one desire for your life. Listen to me in this building and online. He has one desire for your life. And that is, come on, to kill you. Whether immediately or over a period of time. That's his only interest. That's why Jesus said, the thief cometh not. But for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's why one of his names is Dragon. The dragon destroys. God comes to give life. And that we might have it more abundantly. And so we have death, Satan, life, Christ. Now, when Satan came to Eve in the garden through the serpent, he did not issue a command. He issued an invitation. Eat. Temptations are not commands. They're invitations. And you and I must RSVP. Are you following me? <laughs> you don't believe me, let the Bible tell you. You'll believe God's word. Go to Matthew 4. We'll read from verse 1. What's our subject? Government by the people. Mm-hmm. The people choose the government. Matthew 4 from verse 1. 10 after 8. You have Matthew. What was Matthew's profession before he met Christ? Give me a shorter word for that. <laughs> I was thinking of thief, but you're right. <laughs> There'll be no IRS in the new world. Say amen. Mm -hmm. Do you have Matthew 4? Reading from verse 1. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. It's an invitation. If you are who you say you are, why don't you change these stones? They look like bread. Change them into bread. You've been fasting 40 days. You must be hungry. I'm interested in your welfare. The devil comes across as interested in your welfare. And so he told Adam, he told Eve, God doth know in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. I am interested in your welfare. And so he came to Jesus. If thou be the son of God, he issued 
an invitation. Now, Jesus could have said yes, but we thank God he said no. Via, it is written, Thou shalt, man shalt not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Jesus said no. He said no. He said no. Matthew 4, 11, the devil left. You keep hitting him with a no, he gets a little tired, and he leaves for a while. Are you with me? He comes back. But the Bible says resist, and he'll flee. It doesn't say discuss. It says resist, and he'll flee. And God's word doesn't lie. Which means, in order for the devil, well, let the Bible tell you. Go to Romans 6, our subject, government by the people. Romans 6. We will read microscopically. Who has said, Lord, put your words in that man's mouth? Come on, tell the truth. One, two, three. Uh, God, God bless you. I mean that sincerely. The rest of you, don't forget. Do you have, what book did I say? Romans 6, verse 16. When you found it, say amen. Read with me. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey. Stop. In uh, 2016, no, 2020, it was Biden and Trump. Two choices. Know ye not, by voting, those who voted were putting themselves under one person's administration or the other. Are you following me? We're voting for the government. It is government, what's our subject? By the people. Now let's remove Biden and Trump. Let's go back to Romans 6.16. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether you vote for sin unto death, or you vote for obey. Mm -hmm. Now put a name for sin unto death. Come on, too slow. Put a name for sin unto death. Satan, put a name for obedience unto righteousness. Christ, now. You understand obedience, uh, government by the people? We choose. We choose our spiritual government. Let me say it differently. Satan rules by consent. Ah, you missed it. If you and I don't invite him in, he cannot rule. He rules by consent. So does God. So here you are, and here am I, smack dab. Between Christ on the right, my right, Satan on the left. The right is the side of power in the Bible, the side of victory. Here's Christ, here's Satan, here you are, and you have to choose. And most people choose Satan. By simply not consciously choosing Christ. Let me say it again. Without a conscious choice of Christ, when you learn about him, I'm not discussing the genuinely ignorant. When you found out about Christ and you do not make a conscious choice of Christ as your government, you are effectively choosing Satan as your government. So it becomes government by the people. Jesus said, he that is not with me, come on, is against me. Pause. Let's look at that as we continue government by the people. Christ was a cut and dry kind of person. If you're not with me, come on, you're against me. But how are we to be with Jesus? Go to Mark 12, let's read from verse 28. Mark 12, reading from verse 28, our subject, government of the people. Second gospel, Brother Mark, shortest gospel, he wasn't one of the 12 disciples that followed Christ, neither was Luke. But they were followers of Christ. Do you have Mark 12, verse 28? The Bible says that one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, and perceiving that he answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandment is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor, as thyself, there's none other commandment greater than these now. How are we to love God? With all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, with all our strength. Amen. Now, when Jesus says, he that is not with me is against me. He that is not with me, how? 
with all your heart with all your soul with all your mind with all your strength if that's not the way you're with me you're really with satan You cannot be with God 98%. As I told you last night, all the devil needs is 1% of your life to destroy it. But for God to save it, he needs 100%. All of it. Satan doesn't need all. He just wants a little peace. And he can destroy your life. We have a choice. Satan or God. I told you last night, God advertises. Did I tell you that last night? If I didn't, I'm telling you now. Satan advertises. What is God's advertisement? Calvary. He died for you. So God's advertisement is, I died to save you. Satan's advertisement tries to hide the fact that what he's saying, I am trying to kill you. But he hides it behind cigarettes and drugs and illicit sex and alcoholism and pornography and whatever else. He hides it behind these things that he's really trying to kill you. There's a song many years ago, Killing Me Softly. <laughs> Have you heard of that? That's how the devil kills you. He kills you softly. God is very plain and upfront. You see, God travels from A to B. I died to save you. The devil travels like this. You know why? He's a snake. <laughs> you and I can choose to serve God and not Satan. Those who serve, who serve God, what God has for them is union with him. Union with him. Did you hear what I said? What do I mean by union with him? Go to John 17. Government by the people. John 17, let's read from verse 20. Well, let's read 11 first. 11. We leave from 11. Then some more verses later on. John 17, 11. I said, what does God have in store for you and me? Union with him even before we get to the new world. John 17, verse 11. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thy own name those whom thou hast given me. Finish the verse, that they may be one. Aha. Uh -huh. Christ says, I want them to be one among themselves the way you and I are one. Which means, think with me, God has, is God divine, yes or no? Is Christ divine, yes or no? They have a union. Christ takes a divine standard and gives it to human beings. I didn't say it clearly, let me try again, differently. God requires human beings to keep divine standards. You would think God would require human standards for human beings. He requires divine standards for human beings. This is not torture. This shows how highly God thinks of you. When you send your children to school, do you tell them, bring me C's and D's and E's and F's? What do you want? A's? Because you're an Adventist. Come on, say amen. <laughs> Mm. that's what we expect say the Lord's prayer with me our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come slowly now you say thy will be done in earth come on no fine thank you sister blessings upon you it must be done on earth as it's done in heaven in other words, to say what I said differently, God gives heavenly standards to earthly beings. What does God require, have in store for you and me before he comes? Union with him. Let's go back to John 17. We read from verse 20. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. 
that they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, and that the world may believe that thou hast sent me, and the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one. How? Even as we are one, I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. God desires to make us one with him. That amen was weak. Did you have lunch? Amen, amen. Think of what I'm saying. The Almighty wants a union with me. Not angels who've never sinned. We have to choose that. This is a government we need. Satan, death, destruction, sin, moral decline, finally culminating in a fiery end. That's what he wants. Because the devil is incapable of loving. He does not even love his demons. Are you with me? He loves no one. He doesn't even love himself. All he can do is destroy. God desires to save. That's why destruction in God's eyes is a strange act. Because he doesn't like it. Why do you think God delays and delays and delays? Because he's senile? No. He knows how frightening his judgments are. And so he delays. He does not want to unleash it. And so Paul says, knowing the terror of God, we persuade men. Hebrews 10.31, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands, come on, of the living. You don't believe me? Ask Sodom and Gomorrah. Ask those who live time of the flood. It's a terrible thing when God says, I have had enough. Here comes my wrath. You have two governments. The government of God, the government of Satan. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of Satan. Go with me to Colossians 1. Let's read from verse 13. Our subject, government by the people. 25 after 8. I have 15 minutes. Colossians 2, verse, not 2, 1, sorry, verse 13. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You have Colossians 1, verse 13. Let me pray again. Fathers, I continue. Please, Father, release more of your power into me, not for my sake, but for yours. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Read with me. Who hath what? Delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. We have two kingdoms operating in Eden. God's kingdom said, in there thou eatest thereof, come on, thou shalt surely die. Satan's kingdom said, ye shall not surely die. So God's kingdom is based on truth. Satan's kingdom, error. An error is anything that's different from this. Not different from the church manual or the Encyclopedia Britannica. Error in God's eyes in the context of salvation is anything that differs from this. Because ultimately, truth is God himself. Government by the people. You have a choice. You have a vote. And God's Holy Spirit tries to move us in the direction of the right vote. That vote is for Christ, who died, who suffered, who rose, who is preparing a way for us, and who said, I will come back. When he comes back, he'll come back to deliver those who trusted in him, take them with him, and he will destroy, finally, those who rebuffed and rebuffed and rebuffed and rebuffed the pleadings of his Holy Spirit. There is no one, uh, let me, <laughs> there's no need to be intimidated by the devil. He would love to intimidate you. Let me tell you what God has promised you. Are you listening? Online, are you listening? Go to Luke 10. Luke 10. Here's what God has promised you. But you must identify as a disciple of Christ. Luke 10. Read 17 to 19. 
Let me set it up for you. Christ sent out 70 disciples to preach. They have come back and they are reporting what they had done. And the 70 returned again with joy saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. 18. And he answered and said unto them, what? I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. He got too proud. He bragged. Don't do that. <laughs> the same way he fell, you may fall. Are you with me? I saw the first braggart fall. Be careful what you say. Now verse 19, read with me. Behold, I give unto you what? Power. Stop. Stop. That power doesn't mean big muscles. It means authority. Are you with me? You've got to understand. When you're in Christ, you have authority over Satan. I said in Christ. You tried outside of Christ. <laughs> oh, in Christ. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. Now read the next statement. It's so unbelievable. Come on, read it. And over all the power of the enemy. Finish it. And nothing shall hurt you. Bible. But to whom was he speaking? Disciples. Go back to John 17 as quickly as you can. Let me show you the importance of being a disciple. Government of the people. You choose. You vote. The devil can't force himself on you. God cannot force himself on you. You have to choose. You have to vote. Choose your government. John 17. Let's read from verse 9. Now, let me tell you about John 17. This is called the high priestly prayer. And our high priest is Christ. Is he interceding for us now, yes or no? Is he interceding for the world? No. No. No, I set you up by doing this. But no, he's not. He's in deceit. Now, let's read John 17, verse 9, see what I mean. Read with me. I pray for them. Come on. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. I'm not praying for the world. I'm praying for them. Now, go to verse 20. Read with me. What does that say? Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also, which shall believe on me through their word. So 2,000 years ago, that prayer covered you. Yes, sir. Ah, that amen is lifeless. That prayer covered you. Yeah. Now, Christ is in the most holy place. Are you with me? Interceding on our behalf. Who is our disciples? Not the whole world. He is interceding on those who've confessed their sins and accepted him as savior. He speaks for them. Not the whole world. Would he love to save the whole world? Yes. The whole world doesn't want it. Let me say it again. Right as you sit where you sit and online and I stand where I stand. Christ is in the presence of the father speaking on behalf of his people. not on behalf of the whole world his people and so he said much to our surprise in john 79 i pray for them i pray not for the world but for them which thou hast given me for they are thine and all thine are mine and mine are thine meaning when jesus says he's fine with me the father says he's fine with me too Come on, somebody say amen. If Jesus says he's okay with me, your father says he's okay with me. Because when you look at Jesus, you see the father. Are you following me? They are alike, different people, but alike. So what pleases Christ will please the father. For whom have you cast your vote? Christ or Satan? It is government by the people. You've got to vote. Choose Christ. And by so doing, choose life. September 11, 2001, no one expected what happened. You look at the videos, people were running for their lives. They weren't going back for iPhones or whatever else. They, they weren't addicting then. Whatever they had, <laughs> beepers or whatever, blackberries, they weren't going back for that. They were running for the, the end of the world had come. In 2010, I think it was, 
There was a tsunami in the Pacific Rim. Close to 300 people died, drowned. They did not expect it. Are you with me? In 2010, an earthquake hit hit, uh, Haiti. Close to 300,000 people died. They did not expect it. It just came, whoosh, died. Christ is coming. The Bible says in 2 Peter 3 verse 10, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. That can be applied on two levels. The day when he moved into the most holy and the day when he's coming. When he came the first time, nobody knew. Particularly the church. No clue. Who knew? Three wise men from hundreds of miles away. They traveled a long distance. By the time they arrived, Christ was no longer a baby. He was a child. The Bible says he was in a house, not the manger. When the wise men came, took them that long. Who else knew? Shepherds. That was it. <laughs> the high priest didn't know. The Levites didn't know. Maybe a couple of the faithful members, but essentially, God's people did not know he had come. He's coming a second time for those who've chosen him as their government. Are you with me? He's coming a second. We have to know. He cannot come as a surprise to us. That'd be tragic. Christ is coming for those who have chosen him. Hmm? So he can say, come ye blessed of my father, as we said last night. Come, come, come. And as we said last night, depart, depart, depart. How many of you will choose Christ as your government? Can I see your hand? Now, do you mean that? Stand up with me. Jesus Christ, by choice, or Satan, by choice. And let me say it again. The mind that is not decidedly on the side of Christ is under the control of the devil. You don't have to fall down and form at the mouth to be demon-possessed. When we think of demon possession, we think of people in the bush somewhere or uneducated people. The most demon possessed people were the ones who said, crucify him. You can't get more demon possessed than that. Are you following me? Let's kill God. That's devil speaking. But they were calm. The Pharisees were calm and polite and quiet and well-educated. Demon possessed. We have to be Jesus possessed. Holy Spirit possessed. Choose Christ as your government let it be government by the people by their choice by their vote and so i call heaven and earth to record this day against you that i have set before you life and death blessing and cursing vote for life why that both thou and thy seed may live choose christ you may say how say it that if thou wilt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thy heart. So we have mouth and heart go together. Why? Out of the abundance of the, the mountain. Mm-hmm. Say it. But say it out of this. Jesus, I give my life to you. Let the devil hear you. So he knows where you belong. When God created the universe, he didn't think it. He said it. Yes, Let there be light. He did not raise Lazarus by thinking it. He said it. What did he say? Lazarus, come forth. When he cast out demons, he did not think it. He said it. How do I accept Christ? Say it. Jesus, I accept you as my Savior. I deny the devil and all his works. And I place myself under your care, under protection of your blood. You say it. Let the devil hear you. And say it every day. Here's bowed eyes closed. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. God, you're so good. You took a tremendous risk by giving us the power of choice. The power of the vote. To vote for Christ or Satan. That we might have government by the people. Father, so many choose your adversary, Satan. But tonight, we choose Christ. Or some of us renew our choice of Christ. We want Christ because we want life. We want Christ because we want fellowship with divinity, their God. We want Christ because we want union with the Father through Christ. Father in heaven, forgive our sins. 
open our eyes to see the wisdom of choosing Christ. Because when you give him, you give everything you had. And he or she who chooses Christ has chosen you. Let us leave this place, dear God, knowing that while we're not perfect, we still have trials and tribulations, we have chosen Christ. Amen. And under his supervision, we will work on those trials and those tribulations. Take us safely home, dear God. Bring us back tomorrow, Father. Bless our online audience. Again, wrap your arms around our guests and let them know you are pleased they came. Bring them tomorrow, dear God. In Jesus' name and for his sake, let God's people say amen and amen. Before you sit, what will you take from the message? Quickly, raise a hand and tell me. And I let you go to get ready for work tomorrow. Yes. To choose Christ is to choose life. Somebody else. Raise a hand, tell us. Raise a hand, raise a hand, raise a hand. Yes, my brother. You must make a choice. It is a gift God gave you. And it's a risk because you can choose against him. God could have made robots, but he didn't. He wants people to choose to serve him. To choose to do what's right. To choose righteousness. Somebody else, raise your hand. Tell us what will you take. Yes, my sister. We only have power through Christ to fight the devil. Don't go fighting the devil in your power. Because you have vitamin C and you do sit-ups and push-ups. No, no, no. You fight him in Christ. Are you with me? All right. Somebody else. What will you take from the message? Then I let you go. Yes, my brother. With Christ, all things are possible. Yes, sister. God what? God's standards for you as a human being are divine. Never forget that. That's how highly he thinks of you. Somebody else. Raise a Yes. We must choose Christ. One hundred and ninety-nine point nine is not good enough. It just makes you a nice person going to hell. You must choose Christ one hundred percent. One more. Say that again. He prayed for you. Do you mind if I say he also prayed for me and for you? Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Let all God's people say amen and amen. Christ's object, um, our high calling, page 116, paragraph 2. Your last thought at night, your first thought in the morning, should be of him in whom is centered your hope of eternal life. Go to sleep thinking of Jesus. Wake up thinking of Jesus. <laughs>